All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 most anticipated games for 2020. So this list is only gonna include games that we, are, we know are pretty much solidified uh, for this year, 2020. Um, of course, there's gonna be games that get announced in the future. We know there's next-gen games coming out because the next-gen consoles are gonna come out this year. So those games, it's possible unannounced games would make it on my list if we knew about them, of course, but it's as of right now, which is January 21st, this is my top 10 most anticipated games. And just a disclaimer, I'm gonna tell you from the get-go, number 10 on my list is not necessarily a game that I'm excited for. It's just so far, based on all the games that I looked at, it was pretty much like a, a, a filler. Like, I'm not really excited for it, but I could only come up with nine games that I was really excited for. So this game this game pretty much only made it because there was nothing else I could really think of, right? That's the kind of year it is right now um, based on the games that uh, have been confirmed. So let's get right into the list. So coming in at number 10, uh, which I just spoke about, uh, I have Avengers. So I'm not overly impressed with with what's been shown of Avengers. Um, I think it might be a decent game. It might be a mid game. You know, I'm not really completely sure, right? It's been delayed. Hopefully that delay helps it out. Um, I think the showing of it hasn't been necessarily the best. It looks very, a very basic combat. The story is original though. Um, and like I said, it was pretty much between Avengers or cyberpunk for the number 10 entry and I'll, and some people are going to kill me for that but i'm gonna keep it real with you i don't think what's been shown of cyberpunk is very impressive at all i think you know that game was delayed too because it was still very early in development and what they showed really wasn't that great it really wasn't impressive and people really are hyping that game based on the the resume of the, the the developer behind it who is cd project red which most people have catapulted them to a top three developer in the industry all based off of one game so no um i i, I chose to go with avengers um like i said not really necessarily excited for it but hopefully it turns out to be okay so this literally just made it on my list because there was really nothing else that I, I felt like I could put there. Um, so let's move on to number nine. So number nine is Halo Infinite. So I'm not necessarily the biggest Halo fan. Um, I'm a fan of its multiplayer. Uh, I think the Halo story is kind of overrated and people are, you know, really go, there's certain people that really think the Halo story is like really great. I don't really like the Halo campaigns like that. I beat like all of them on legendary so th there is some enjoyment i believe to be had there but i don't really go crazy over any like halo campaigns but i i love playing the multiplayer especially with uh people in the community you know that that's real fun it, it gets you know real crazy like the free-for-alls you know the team slayers and all that stuff so um the halo multiplayer uh is definitely what i uh, hope bring some fun back around here because you know it's been dry for multiplayer games um and you know halo 5 did a pretty good job at that even though people didn't really uh like like the story uh very much but um halo is definitely a, a a solid uh you know um franchise even though it started to wane and this is going to be on pc right i think this is i don't think we i don't think we got absolute confirmation but it's probably going to be on pc and you know um we can uh get away from that uh that super claustrophobic um, FOV, you know, as we did um, with this recent Halo release that was uh, on PC. So yeah, number nine is uh, Halo Infinite. Number eight is Ori and the Will of the Wisp. So Ori, uh, the original Ori was a fantastic game. Beautiful, very stylized graphics. Um, I think the Will of the Wisp is is an automatic game of the year contender. You know they they usually try to put the best um <clears throat> the best uh indie type style. It's not an indie game necessarily, but uh an, they always try to put the best game of that like type um in the game of the year categories, at least one of them. And 
and and they usually choose the best of them and ori is definitely going to make it in there ori has amazing music has amazing visuals it has great metroidvania style gameplay yeah the game everything about that game is solid it, it really solid it really is just uh firing on all cylinders i really enjoyed um the original and i think they're just going to expand off of everything they did with the uh they did with the original that game is going to be out of here so uh for me uh, ori and the will of the wisp is number eight number seven is neo 2 so the original neo i put like 85 hours into um and that was really because there was a whole bunch of like they they crammed a whole bunch of like optional bosses and optional stages in the original Neo and everything like that. And I just felt the need to do every little thing. I did get a little bit fatigued by the end of it um, because, yeah, you know, just playing nonstop and everything like that. But I definitely enjoyed the boss fights. The boss fights were really cool. I, I I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted with Neo, too, because it's coming to PS4 at launch um, right only. And I, I want to play it on PC, but I'm not into that whole waiting thing. I think waiting is for peasants. But Neo's graphics are not great on um, on PlayStation. You know, uh, oh my, I, I played it on PlayStation Pro, and they had the option to prioritize the uh, the, the gameplay or the visuals, and um, you know the frame rate or the visuals. And of course, with this type of game, you got to prioritize. The, uh, the 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 um, the the frame rate and of course that lowers the resolution I believe it, I believe it might have been a dynamic resolution but I think for the most part the game ran at 720p on the PlayStation Pro or it might even have been 1080p but the point is the game didn't look great on PlayStation but I don't want to wait like a whole year for it to come to place to for it to come to PC either I wish it was coming out day one on PC because I wouldn't there's no way I would buy it on PlayStation if it was coming day one. But um, yeah, y'all know I love my Souls games. Uh, y'all know how I feel about them. You know, y'all know I love challenging games and everything like that. So yeah, of course, Neo Two had to uh, make it on this uh, list for me. Uh, number six is Gears Tactics. Um, I'm a huge XCOM fan. For anybody who doesn't know, love XCOM, XCOM Two. Uh, you know this 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 type of um strategy game is my thing i always look for different games in this genre there's a lot of clones but nothing is really as good as XCOM. um and the thing about this genre is you could pretty much do any game you could take any game and and and, and turn it into this genre uh you could create create a, a halo X XCOM game uh literally you could take any almost any universe and 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 make it into an XCOM style game, and it would work. You got to make, you got to give it its own little characteristics and 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 attributes, so it's not just another clone, but it could definitely work. And I've seen them do that they, that they're doing some unique things with uh with Gears Tactics to d differentiate it from other games of of this of this caliber. So um I think I might be on vacation though. I think I might be going on vacation the week that gears tactics comes out but uh I'm, I'm i ain't gonna lie i might still try to um i'm gonna have my laptop with me i might still try to get some 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 game time in uh you know wh while i'm out there so I'm, I'm definitely excited for for gears uh tactics um you know i i think the gears universe just translates very well into this genre um and you know it's just another game if if you're into the gears um universe um th them trying to uh ex expand it past it just being a third person shooter as we've seen with like the mobile entry and now this this type of entry so yeah uh, i'm 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 hyped for this game definitely hyped for it uh number 5 <clears throat> is resident evil 3 remake i mean i don't think uh this needs much explanation capcom absolutely did their thing with the resident evil 2 uh 2 remake um, and I don't think three is going to, I don't think three as a remake is going to be as good or impress us as much because they set the bar really high with Resident Evil two. Uh, but three is just going to be another solid entry. I don't think it's going to be better. I don't think it's going to be like way worse or anything like that. Uh, I, I mean, I think most people would say Resident Evil two in general is, is a better game than Resident, Resident Evil three anyway. 
Um, well, some people think three is better, but uh, I think the the, the consensus uh, most people believe two two is better in general. Um, so yeah, the the bar is set so high, and that like surprise factor of how good two turned out um, won't be there with three. Our 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 like expectations are set, so we'll still enjoy three and the fact that you know it takes place. Um, uh, simultaneously as when when two was happening and they're adding some uh obviously put adding their own uh modernization um gameplay uh to three as as they did with two and everything like that um so yeah it's it's definitely gonna be fun uh, i'm i'm definitely looking forward to this one i don't think this one is uh gonna be um game of the year uh I don't think it's going to be nominated for like putting many game of the year categories categories like two was um, simply because of this, the fact that I of, of what I stated before um, that there's a little bit more competition this year and like it are two already set our expectations. So but yeah, um, I, this is going to be successful and hopefully, it, it, you know, Capcom brings like Dino Crisis, a, a new Dino Crisis game, a new Onimusha game. And, you know, some more of those because, uh, yes, we definitely want to play um, some of their old games uh, remade. So, yeah, Resident Evil 3 remake is number five. Number four. Oh, man, I could hear the tears already. I could hear the frustration. I could hear the anger. How dare you? I'm going to kill you, BG. I'm going to find where you live. How dare you disrespect this game? Number four is The Last of Us Part 2. Nah, yeah. Last of Us Part Two is not even in my top three. Some of, this is this is not a to me like when you look at this objectively, it's not a bad thing. I mean, it's in my top ten games. It's number four, but some of you are gonna look look at that like it's that's blasphemy. Like how how dare you? This is heresy, right? Um, and put simply, explaining why it's number four is of course I'm looking forward to playing the continuation of the story. Uh, you know they're ex they're um they're fleshing out the Last of Us gameplay. In, in part two and all the mechanics i i always felt felt like even for its time the original last of us game mechanics were kind of basic uh the story the story definitely was was great but i mean even the visuals for the for the original at the time i never felt like the originals were mind-blowing people people like to like to even exaggerate and say that the last of us uh, remastered looks like a ps4 game no it doesn't that game still looks pretty bad y'all look at one thing in a game y'all look at the best thing in the game and and say the whole game looks good no i look at the i look at the range i look at the worst thing the worst looking thing in the game and then i look at the best looking thing in the game and that's how i judge how good a game looks but i i'm i'm, I'm like i'm going on a tangent point is the last of us 2 is going to be a much better game than obviously the the original right? Last of Us wasn't even my game of the year, as it was uh, many, many other people. But the real reason it's not in my top three, it's not be a better at a, a better part of the list, is because there's not going to be a Last of Us Factions. I'm a kid, and I love Last of Us Factions. I love that online multiplayer. So when Naughty Dog hit us, you know, hit us with the, um, with the bait and switch, you know, they originally, they originally told us like, yeah, multiplayer is going to be there at launch. And then uh, when it wasn't mentioned, we had to, you know, stab it out of them, tell us, you know, what's going on with factions um, and everything like that. When they finally told us, like, yeah, it's not going to be available at launch. Sorry, guys. And it's, it's we've pretty much learned it's going to be a separate uh, a, a separate product. Um, and yeah, I would be real with you. If it was there, if factions was going to was going to be packaged with this game as originally told. As, as as how they originally told us, it would absolutely be number one. It would be number one because it would be that I feel like it's an incomplete product missing the multiplayer. So being with with the fact that it's missing a part of the game that's important to me, it drops down three slots from number one to number four. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, The Last of Us Part Two is number four. Number three. Uh, and this shouldn't necessarily be a surprise. I mean, people like to get on me all the time that I screamed like a little girl and uh, at the top of my lungs uh, when this game was announced. Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's one of my favorite games of all time. 
Um, the reason it's number three, I mean, you could argue it, it, it should be at a better place on my list, maybe number one or number two, but the reason it's number three is because of the e episodic releases. Um, I even told myself at one point, nah, I ain't getting this game. They releasing it in episodes. Nah, I ain't with that. I'm gonna wait for the whole thing to come out. And then I was like, who the hell am I lying to? Like, why am I lying to myself? I'm getting this damn game. Listen, when, when, when it comes to your favorite game, everybody has a price. And that's just a fact. We can say, oh, I'm not going to support this. I wouldn't do this. I'm not buying it. Until it's a game you like, yeah, shut up. It's like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get hit. So then and they hit us and they hit me with my favorite game, except it's episodic. And I'm going to shut up and I'm going to buy that game. I'm going to know my role, okay? Uh, so yeah, um, Final Fantasy VII, love the game. Um, people have been clamor clamoring for a remake for a long time. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait for it. So yeah, Final Fantasy VII is number three. Number two, this might, this might, uh, this might surprise some people. Number two is actually Ghost of Tsushima. The reason it's Ghost of Tsushima for me is more about my interest in this game. Cause it's like my interest is boosting up my anticipation for it, right? Um, this game is gonna be, uh, God damn it! I'm, I'm I'm forgetting I'm forgetting their name. Um, Sucker Punch's most ambitious game, and I think this game is really gonna surprise a lot of people, uh, based on the scope and the magnitude and and, and the uh, just the, the gameplay mechanics, right? I don't know how the story is gonna be, but I think this game is gonna be very deep in the gameplay department, and I think it's gonna it's obviously gonna look uh very the presentation is gonna be um, you know, top, you know, top caliber, right? But as I said, am I necessarily like more hyped to play Ghost of Tsushima than The Last of Us? Not necessarily, but I'm more interested in playing Ghost of Tsushima than The Last of Us um due to the just based on the fact that I kind of know I know I kind of know what I'm getting with The Last of Us and it it, it is going to be like this this open area linear game, I, I know what it is and there's not much surprise, I guess. No, it's not even surprise, it's just that what I picture Ghost of Tsushima being based on gameplay, I think is gonna have me more interested and enjoying that game slightly more than The Last of Us. So what I think Ghost of Tsushima is gonna be is what I'm basing this off of. And I know that's kind of like, you know, usually I don't make that type of leap, but I, I'm, I'm going based off of what we've been shown and what I'm like, I guess, predicting the game will be like. So yeah, it, it is what it is. Ghost of Tsushima for, for, for me is number two based on what's been shown and what I think think we're, we're going to be given. The interest just catapulted it to number two for me. And just the fact that they've been working on this game so damn long. I think I think Sucker Punch is, is putting their foot in this game. They go they putting their foot in this game. And I think it's I think it's going to be like a game of the year nominee. And, you, you know, I, I, I tend to love these uh, samurai or ninja or shinobi games, whatever you want to consider it. I tend to love these things. So yeah, Ghost of Tsushima for me is number two. Number one. Number one is Dying Light 2. Put some respect on Dying Light and Techland's name, okay? Di the original Dying Light was the sleeper hit of the year when it came out. I don't even remember what year that came out, right? It was the sleeper hit of the year. It was the most underrated game of the year it was probably the most unique game i played in a long time not that there's no other game like it you can bring up a few other games like it i mean of course dead island dead island was a bad version of, of dying light you could bring up um uh you, you could bring up mirror's edge because of, because of the parkour uh you could bring up brink because of the parkour and the shooting and some other games no game is completely completely original but the fact that this game put together uh, the the parkour and and the and the melee combat, but 
also had shooting combat and had an interesting story. The visuals were probably the weakest thing. Um, and the game had so much like lore and I love the Easter eggs. And then they released an, I think it was an hour long um, gameplay uh, gameplay uh, demo. And it looked beautiful. And the game looked so, so fleshed out. They added like way more parkour moves. They added... Um, I think like was it dialogue? It was like dialogue decisions and, and trees and multiple endings and you got your choices and they got consequences and they got this beautiful large world and they you know they expanded the combat. They 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 tricked that thing out. Okay, Dying Light Two is is looking crazy. I don't know if y'all seeing what I'm seeing, but that game looks amazing to me. It looks phenomenal. By the way, I did an interview with one of the game uh, designers for that, so y'all should check that out. Um, you know, I did a little uh, hour interview with uh, uh, Simon uh, Smectella, I believe his, his name was. Um, so yeah, y'all should check that that uh, that video out. But yeah, Dying Light Two was just looking phenomenal to me. I, and 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 they, that game was disrespected because, and it's funny that game has like a seventy eight on Metacritic. But if you it has a huge fan base, it sold really well. And if you ask anybody who actually played that game, they'll tell you they they are lost. They are bewildered at how that game has a 78 on Metacritic. That game is at the least a high 80. So I don't know what the people who were playing this game, I don't know what they played, but this game is a, is at least a high 80. And I have no I have no doubt that Dying Light 2 will be like at the lowest low 90s on Metacritic. That game is going to be phenomenal. All right. So, yes, Dying Light 2 is my number one most anticipated games of the year, game of the year. So, yeah, um, that's my list. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, I'm sure some of y'all going to have some problems. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get slandered for a few things. Hopefully I didn't like I, I went through the 2020 list of games. Um a few times to make sure I wasn't missing anything. I wasn't missing a few games that should be in consideration. Um, like I said, Cyberpunk 2077, I guess you could consider that an honorable mention. I don't think there's much honorable mentions uh, but beside, besides that one. Um, and, and obviously, like I said, I'm going based off of games that pretty much have solid 2020 release dates or frames, you know, like time frames that they're at least definitely releasing in 2020 we don't some of them we don't know when but they're definitely 2020 games so yeah hit the like button make sure you hit the notification bell so you can know any, anytime i upload a video let me know what y'all think about my list follow me on twitter and i'll check y'all next video all right i'm out of here peace